Narayanam Namaskritam Naram Chevanadam Tamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tito Jayurira Nesta Prayeshu Madhvesu Nityam Bhagavata Sevya Bhagavata Mashuki Bhakti Bhavati Nashtiki Nikamal Kapadur Garitam Param Shukam Karan Jav Javishamitam Pipata Bhagatam Rasha Mario Mohara Hora Sikupavi Bhagaham Krishna Sadama Bhagate Damagini Krona Stadi Samesha Paranaka Hurjuna Ritaham Tamapiyadabishitabishitamibu, <laughs> Siman Rasa Rasa Rambi Bamsi Bene Karsan Bene Shano Kuri Gopana Jesu Yasanam Tibiad Vrindaranya Kapadumada Shimadrad Nagara Shima Sanisto Shi Shi Radu Shira Govinda Ni Presta Davi He Seva Manush Manami Namba Upramanya Devaya Go Brahmani Taya Chajikari Taya Krishnaya Govaya Namo Namaha Manganang Bhagavan Vishnu Mangan Umiruda Dija Manganan Pani Kaksho Manganaya Tano Hari Om Narayanaya Vibhmihi Vasudhe Vaidimhi Tano Vishnu Pachariyadhe Om Mahadevi Chavidmihi Vishnu Padni Chidimhi Tano Vishnu Pachariyadhe Mahalakshmi Namastubhyam Namastubhyam Sare Sare Mani Hari Priyam Nasim Yam Namastim Yam Dirayadhe Dukami Patimi Andesha Skarapatiya Shakripa Saranaran Shantu Shadavaram Mukam Kibit Vakari Anshavarish Marahe Panga Girlanga Nadeka Hari Om Aginati Marandasya Ganangana Sanaga Chaksurun Miritam Yanatashma Yi Sigur Vedma Siti Tanimano Vishtam Stapitam Yanabutare Sayam Rapakara Mayam Parati Sa Parantikam Namao Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Butare Shimari Bhakti Vedanta Shami Tanamanamaste Sarasati Devi Gurani Pacharine Nevishesa Sanibari Paskita Desana Si Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaya Tikadadha Shiva Sri Gaur Bhaktavinna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Thanks for joining. Jean, <coughs> Govinda Dave, Jay. My mouse isn't working. Not even, oh, here we go. Jay and Rakesh. Appreciate all of you jumping on board and seven other people, according to the Facebook little icon there. Eight now. <laughs> Transcendental Tuesday, and <clears throat> we're right in the middle of statements by the greatest sage amongst the demigods, Sri Narada Muni. The title of our talk today is Narada's Promise. The verse, 39th verse, 5th chapter, 1st canto, Vishnu Imam Shah Nigamam Brahman, Abhyayta Maya Nustitam, Adana Pedyanamashram, Shashmin Babam Nake Shama, O Brahmana, Vyasadevas, by the Supreme Lord Krishna, I was endowed first with the transcendental knowledge of the Lord as inculcated in the confidential parts of the Vedas, and then the spiritual offenses, and then was this intimate loving service. And all these various stages of realizations, one after another, come about as a result of what Prabhupada calls communion. I love that. Communion with the Lord. Communion comes from the word common. What do we have in common with the Lord? The Lord is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. We're emanations from Him, so we also have the same qualities as Him. Particles of sunlight possess the same qualities as the sun globe itself. Sun globe emanates light and heat. Particles of sunshine have light and heat to a much lesser quantitative degree, granted, but they still have the same quality. So Krishna is the transcendental autocrat. He plays his flute. He invites all living beings to dance and to sport and observe festivals and celebrations with him in the spiritual world and eternally liberated, blissful bodies full of knowledge. We have the right to claim that for ourselves. We are as good as God, which means to say that our real life is to be involved in reciprocal, intimate, deep, relishable, loving relationships with each other, but we relate best and most closely and intimately with each other 
through the root, through the root, the, the leaves, branches, and twigs of a flower don't so much interact with themselves, amongst themselves, as they all connected by the root. When the water is put on the root of the tree, and all the branches, leaves, and flowers are commonly nourished. So similarly, we are experiencing dissonance, cacophony, strife, friction, war, conflicts, because we're all trying to carve out only a niche of influence in this material world. And if there are collective entities like municipalities and counties and states and nations, it's only because we found it more um, convenient to ally ourselves with other sense gratifications in order to promote our own particular agenda. And because each and every one of us sets ourselves up as the supreme majority and supreme proprietor, we are all on one level or another in conflict with one another. Communion is the chief. Communion, union, harmony, tranquility, love and peace and respect and sensitivity and consideration are achieved when we all have the same center point, when we all reconnect and acknowledge our relationship with Krishna as the root of everything. And we do that through transcendental sound. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. The sound is non different than the Lord himself. In the absolute platform, the name of the Lord and the Lord are non different. Nama, Chintamani Krishna, Chaitanya, Dasha Vigana, Purnashuddha, Nitra, Vina Bam, Nami Namana. Nama Chintamani, the name of Krishna is like touchstone. It's like Chintamani. The name is so powerful. And if you allow even the slightest entrance into the, our dark hearts, the power of the beam of light of bhakti is such that it will dissipate all darkness. It will reach every nook and cranny and every secret, dark, hidden, moldy, stuffy, smelly part of our heart. And it will act in a prophylactic and antiseptic way to purify our hearts. And the result will be that we will achieve these three stages of realization. Realization of the transcendental knowledge of the Lord as inculcated in the confidential parts of the Vedas. <coughs> and then we'll be endowed, secondly, with spiritual opulences and ultimately with this intimate loving service. And all this is achieved through communion with the Lord by transmission of sound, transcendental sound. But we have to be careful how we receive the sound and from whom we receive the sound. <clears throat> At the time of initiation by a bona fide spiritual master, the Maha Mantra, as well as the Gautra Mantra, is whispered into the right ear of the disciple. That means that love of God, spiritual realization, is received from one who himself or herself has received it from their spiritual master. Nobody can pass on, nobody can transmit transcendental sound in an effective way, transformative way, unless they themselves have been transformed by serving at the lotus feet of a spiritual master. To become a guru or a spiritual master or touchstone, to change for the better lives hundreds if not thousands of people. One must have been a submissive servant of one's spiritual master. You cannot avoid this step and still be spiritually potent. One is empowered by one's spiritual master. One's spiritual master was empowered by his spiritual master, who was empowered by his spiritual master. Just like an electric line. You have to connect with a live wire in order to get electrified yourself. You cannot be off to one side, apart, remote, indifferent from the power which is coming down into civic succession, originating with the Lord, then being imparted to Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma took as his disciple Narada Muni. Narada Muni listened attentively and submissively to, to Lord Brahma, his guru. Now he has got bhakti, he's got the potential to sow the seeds of devotional service, and he is sowing his seed in the heart of Vyasadeva, who then is going to translate and comment and provide all of the Vedic literatures for the benefit of all living beings. 
Now, if Narada's promise to Vyasadeva is that by serving me and listening attentively, you will receive all the power of the Absolute. God is within each and every one of us. Ishvara Sarvabhutan Vridhishana Brahmanya Sarvabhutan Yantra Rudan Yaya. The Lord is seated in the machine of this body as a well wishing friend alongside the individual spirit soul. So when you accept the power of the Guru externally, that activates the Lord from within. And working from both ends, from outside and inside, your ignorance, your agyana, your, your ignorance, your darkness, your misery, it doesn't have a chance. It's doomed. Because light, knowledge, bliss are coming at it from both ends. On the external is a spiritual master, the representative of the Lord, or Nityananda Prabhu himself, Sheshanaga, Balaram, this, this power and strength of the Lord manifests itself externally before us in the form of the spiritual master and then the unlimited Lord who created millions of universes. He resonates with that external presence manifestation from within the heart. So Narada says, inasmuch as I have the favor of the Lord and I have been blessed, it is said in this age, Kali, Kalera Dhamma, Krishna Nama, Sankirtanam, Krishna Shakti, Bina Nahi, Tadeva The religion for this age, simply, attentively, avoiding the ten offenses, chanting the holy names of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Korna Suda, Nitya Mukta. The name has everything you need. You don't have to go outside of the name. You simply take shelter in the name, everything will be provided. In the seventh canto of the Bhagavatam, Yudhishthira, while wandering in the forest, meets this sage. The sage is lying in the path. He's only chanting the names of the Lord. He's not lifting a finger for his own maintenance. He's taken the vow of the python, which means he'll only accept that which voluntarily walks into his mouth or comes to him without any external effort. Yudhisthira said, okay, I understand that, that you're, you're relying entirely on the Lord. You're taking the name of the Lord, exhibiting total faith, that the, that the name of the Lord is porna, it's full. So whatever you need, shelter, food, and everything can be obtained if you take shelter of the name. It's not that you chant the name and then you have to do some extra curricular activities in order to maintain yourself. If you with faith and avoiding the ten offenses, take shelter of the holy name, everything will be supplied. I understand that, but why are you fat? Why are you fat? And this age, basically, not, not only does the Lord supply us what we need, but he supplies us in abundance. He supplies us more than what we need. He gives us that power that we can not only liberate ourselves, but we can also sow the seeds of bhakti in the hearts of all of those open-minded and open-hearted people with whom we come into contact. So the power of the Guru, having received that power from his own Guru, is that he can illuminate any number of people. Andanya, Tendi, Dhiru, Pihano. One who hasn't got the power from his previous Guru is compared to a blind man. And no matter how much he claims to lead other blind men to safety, he cannot do it. He cannot do it. A blind man cannot save other blind men. Only a person with sight can save other blind men. One must approach someone who is enlightened, someone who has spiritual vision, not another conditioned soul, not another blind man, not another person, not another cheater, who promises to give what he doesn't have. Narda has love of God. He has the eyes of love by which the Lord is visible to him at all times. And Narada promises that if we follow him and take the holy name and disciple the session into our heart, we will attain the ultimate and not in the sweet by and by. He says to the degree that we take the orders of the spiritual master on our head to chant good Hare Krishna rounds, follow the four regular principles, we can easily achieve 
perfection to go back to Fathead at the end of this very, very lifetime. Brahmanda Brahmite Konu Bhagavan Jiva Guru Krishna Bhashadi Pai Bhakti Lodabhi. After wandering for who knows how many lifetimes and who knows how many planets up and down, who knows how many species of life, who knows how many incarnations, Jala Jala Ravaka Yisrava there are 8,400,000 species of life spread throughout the universe, and we could have taken birth in each and every one of those species multiple times before we were fortunate enough to ask ourselves, who am I? What am I doing here? How can I make sense of this fruitless, aimless wandering? What is the purpose? What is the direction in which I'm meant to go? What is the purpose for which I'm created? It says, Brahmanda Brahmite Kono Bhagavan Ajiva. When the tiny infinitesimal, infinitesimal soul, who after all is the son of the Almighty, who can lay claim to his inheritance of eternal bliss knowledge, to whom the Lord tenders invitations to come and sing and dance and sport with him eternally, when that living being comes to the level in the human form of life of inquiring, of Tato Brahma Jinashi, who am I, why am I here, and what is the purpose of life, then Krishna sends him a bona fide guru in the simple succession from Lord Brahma and Narada Muni and Vyasadeva. And that external manifest of the guru is capable, more than capable, of delivering this inquisitive soul from birth, death, disease, and over. So Narada Muni, in this verse, speaking to Vyasadeva, he gives his guarantee, he gives his iron-clad promise that if you focus on pure, unalloyed bhakti, dharma, Kaitavo, Cha, Nirmatsara, Saram. After having compiled all the Vedic literatures talking about Dharma, Arta, Karma, Moksha, now if you knuckle down and give the Sunambona, the Nigama Kaputurika, if you give the purpose, the fruit, the goal of all Vedic instructions in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam, the beautiful sword of the absolute truth and his devotees, there is an absolute ironclad guarantee that not only you, but all those who dive into the oceanic nectar of the Srimad Bhagavatam will be delivered from birth, death, disease, and old age. And not only will they be delivered, but the purpose is to deliver others as well. Krishna says, no one is more dear to me, not just who delivers themselves, but who delivers others, who having been empowered, having received the seed of bhakti from one's guru, then try their level best to spread them. Bita, Raga, Vyakara, Madmaya, Bhavoga, Putam, Mad, Avamagata. Krishna says, not just one or two have received bhakti from their spiritual masters and been delivered, but the characteristic of bhakti is once you receive it, once your life is successful, then you want to spread it. You want to make as, uh, as many other people's lives successful as possible. And so Vaishnavas are ceaselessly trying to spread the good life around, ceaselessly trying to endeavor with great determination to deliver others from birth, death, disease, and old age. We want to take others back to home, back to Godhead. We don't care only for our own salvation, but we want others to be delivered as well. This was expressed by Prahlava Prayena Deva Muniya Shravi Mukta Kama. There are those who do austerities, observe vows and silence, practice yoga, shami mukta kaminam, and they're lusting after their own salvation. Prayana deva munya shami mukta kaminam, monam charati biganinam, tarata nishtam, ne tadvaya kripanam bi moksha meka, nanyad varesha saranam prabhadya. Prahlad Mara says, I consider those people who prioritize their own salvation as miserly. No matter how expert yogis they are, no matter how austere they are, no matter how long they observe vials of silence for, no matter how impressive they are in and of themselves, I consider that bottom line is their kripana, their miserly, their poor hearted, because they have no compassion or concern for others. They want to get themselves out of this mess, this quagmire of the material world, and leave all others behind to suffer. The devotees of the Lord are not such cripple-minded, poor-hearted living beings. They exert themselves for the benefit of others. In fact, 
So much do they prioritize, reflecting the kind nature of their Lord himself, the welfare of others, that we run across this quote in the ninth canto of the Bhagavatam from Rantide. Not only is he not concerned about his liberation, but he's willing to pass up his own liberation. He's willing to remain in this material world eternally, provided that other souls can be liberated. He's willing even to give up his own pious credits, to give them away, those credits which have been achieved through assiduous and diligent hearing and chanting, serving the lotus feet of his spiritual master, all those credits which have been more than adequate to propel him to immortality, he's willing to donate them to others and remain in this world. Ranti De, the great kind-hearted devotee of the Lord, he says, I am prepared to stay in this material world forever. I'm prepared to stay among the fallen conditioned souls who are suffering birth, death, disease, and old age and work exclusively for their benefit. I don't care to go to heaven. I don't even care to go to Vaikuntha. But I do care that none of my god brothers and god sisters should suffer in this material world. I remember I was spent a year in Vista, Volunteers in Service to America, when I was in my 20s. I took a year off from college at the University of Virginia. And I did training in Baltimore, Maryland. I remember the training center was on Pratt Street. There were young people chosen. I think they said out of every 20 that applied, they chose one. Well, we were the one in 20, the cream of the crop. It was our class comprised about maybe maybe 30 people. We got very close to each other during the course of the six weeks training session. We had a lot of seminars and classes in-house, and then we went out and visited people in the Baltimore area. And then I was assigned to Atlanta, Georgia. And while I was spending 18 months in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, in a place called Summerhill in People's Town, we had a conference in Chattanooga, Tennessee, so the government paid for us to go there. And I remember one statement by one of the presenters. He said, an educated person, the sign of an educated person is that he or she could hear the cry of suffering 5,000 miles away. That really struck me. That was 50 years ago, and that statement stays with me to this very day. Hear the cry of a suffering living entity even 5,000 miles away. And he might have meant human beings, but really, those who are enlightened, who are sensitive, they hear the cries of the chickens, the cows, the goats, the lambs being sent to slaughter. Uh, uh, that, that sensitivity is a sign of a truly educated person. Hey, Krishna, Karuna, Sindhu, Dina, Bandhu, Jigatpate, Gopi, Shanta, Bika, Kanta, Namoshate, to take care of all living beings, to ensure that no living being suffers on my account is a concern of all Vaishnava devotees. In fact, so paramount is this um, ethic of not causing pain, rather doing good to all living entities, that Lord Chaitanya had a stunning statement. He said, Gopa Grihe Janmachere Gabara Se Punya Hairani Bicharya. Lord Chaitanya said at one point in time, he said, he said, I've taken birth in a Brahmin family because of my past good activities. He said, in my past birth, Gopagrahe Janmachile, I was a cowherd boy. Of course, he's referring to his appearance as Krishna. In my past birth, I was a cowherd boy. And I accumulated such a mountain of pious activities that has, that has resulted in my taking birth as a Brahmin in this current Lifetime. Namo Brahmani Taya Jog Jagadi Taya Krishnaya Govindaya Namo Namaha. Krishna is particularly fond of the Brahminical class of men who eat on behalf of the Lord and speak the philosophy of the Lord, who represent the Lord, who themselves are meant to become spiritual masters, and he's particularly fond of the all living beings, the foremost and most generous of whom are the cows. So the promise of Narada and all spiritual masters is that they will, without any doubt, deliver their disciples from birth, death, disease, and old age. And just as they deliver their disciples, the implicit understanding is that their disciples will try their level best to deliver others. So the devotees of the Lord carry 
the mercy of the Lord. They travel here and there over the surface of the earth, simply looking for opportunities to inject the seed of bhakti in receptive, receptive people. 500 years ago, Prataparuta was such an aspiring devotee of the Lord. He was king of Orissa. In fact, because of his devotional service, because of his bhakti, Krishna protected his kingdom from Muslim conquests. Practically all other provinces and states of India were under the foot of the Muslim conquerors, but Orissa under King Pachapuruta never got conquered by the Muslims. And this is an indicative of his favor by Lord Krishna. And yet Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, who is Krishna coming down as a devotee, as a spiritual master, as a guru, refused to allow Maharaj Prataparuta to come into his presence. Prataparuta worshipped Krishna daily. Prataparuta's kingdom was the only kingdom practically in all of India that had not been conquered by the Muslims as an indication of the favor that Krishna showed in King Prataparuta. But Lord Chaitanya was a sannyasi, and a sannyasi has to be above reproach. We recall that Sita was stolen from Ram through no fault of his own whisked away to Lanka and held captive for one year by Ravana. Eventually, Ram moved heaven and earth to get her back. He was God. He could have replaced that one Sita with hundreds and hundreds of other Sita. But Eka Patni Bhachavara He wanted to set an example to people in general that a householder should have one life, wife and be satisfied with that one wife. And so, while he could have produced many, many other Sitas, or his mystic powers, he moved heaven and earth, he crossed the ocean, he allied himself with the monkeys, he fought a huge 10-day battle with thousands and thousands of rakshasas and eventually dispatched Ravana in a man-to-man -man combat, all in order to protect his one wife, Sita. And after all of that, Sita was tested by fire in case there was any thought that she had swayed her affections to Ravana under his captivity. She went into the fire, and the fire god himself brought her of the fire and said, this woman is faultless. She has never thought of anybody went wrong. And in spite of all of that, when Ram, wandering the city of Ayodhya in disguise in order to find out what the people were thinking, how they were doing, overheard one low-class washerman say to his wife, who apparently had cheated on him, said, Ram may take his wife back after she lived with another man, but I will not allow you back into the house. Those are the totally, totally inaccurate uh, criticism of Lord Ram. It had no basis in fact whatsoever. And the person delivering it was a low class, no account person, kind of person who was in the mode of ignorance to criticize everything and everything. And still, because of that, Sita had to go into the forest. Because taking a position of power, a position of influence, taking a position, the royal position, Lord Ram had to be beyond all criticism, even false, even envious criticism. Similarly, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, though Prataparuta was a pure devotee of the Lord, he would not allow Prataparuta to see him. He said, Shruklavaste Mashi Benuli, I cheno Gesanya Sarapira Apicharana. Says, uh, one who is in the sannyas order of life, as Lord Chaitanya had been, you can, he cannot allow any besmirch of his character. He cannot allow even the appearance of impropriety. It says in a black cloth, another spot is not noticeable at all. There's so many spots and so many um, blemishes. One more blemish on a black cloth or a gray cloth makes no difference whatsoever. But one blemish on a white cloth is immediately apparent. So a sannyasi should comport and conduct himself in such a way that even the envious can find nothing negative to say. But Lord Chaitanya would not allow King Prataruta to come into his presence. King Prataruta declared that if I can't meet Lord Chaitanya, I'm going to give up my life. I'm going to, my whole, my whole life is worthless if I can't meet Lord Chaitanya. God himself is living in Jagannath Puri, in my own kingdom, and he refuses to see me. <laughs> he felt so bad and so rejected that he said, he said, uh, 
to Nityananda Prabhu, I'm going to give up my life. So Nityananda went to Lord Chaitanya. Uh, also, Ramananda Roy appealed to Lord Chaitanya on behalf of King Pratyaparudra, Sri Damodar. Everybody was hinting, hinting, hinting. Lord Chaitanya wouldn't budge. So finally, Nityananda hit upon a solution to save Maharaj Pratyaparudra from committing suicide. And he asked Lord Chaitanya, give me an old piece of clothing. Something that you wore and you've outworn and you've discarded, I'll give it to the king and let the king worship that. This is based on the statement by Lord Shiva to Parvati and Padmaradanim Sarvisham Bishnaradanim Tajmad Paratanim Tidiyanam Samachara. Parvati asked her husband and guru, Lord Shiva, what is the highest type of worship? Yati Deva Radab, Pitu Yati. Bhutaniyanta, Yanti Yagana. Shiva said, you worship the demigods, you go to the demigods. You worship the ancestors, you go to the ancestors. You worship the, the, you, the ghosts and spirits, you go to the ghosts and spirits. You worship me, you come to my eternal spiritual abode. But better than worship of me, says Lord Krishna, is worship of my devotees. This is the conclusion that Lord Shiva delivered to Prabhupada. Of all types of worship, demigods, ghosts, spirit, ancestors, the best worship is worship of Vishnu or Krishna. Because that worship will take you to that world going which you'll never return again to this world of birth and death. However, there's a higher level of worship than worship of Vishnu, and that is worship of the paraphernalia of Vishnu, worship of the devotees. If you worship the property of Lord Vishnu, then Lord Vishnu is captured. Lord Vishnu is owned by his devotees. And so if you worship the devotees, then coming along in that package is Lord Vishnu himself. And so Nityananda Prabhu suggested to Lord Chaitanya that if we give King Pratyabhuta Tadiya, something associated with you, everything associated with the Lord is worship alone. Uh, everything. Um, in the last analysis, everything is spirit. And when we use it to honor and glorify the Lord, even if it's an old piece of discarded ka, it is non different than the Lord. It is also spirit. Nityananda Prabhu delivered, got this cloth from Srup Damodar, and then Nityananda delivered that cloth to Sarvabhama Vajraya, and Sarvabhama Vajraya delivered that to the king. And the king became mollified. He, had the, he saw that Lord Chaitanya gave that cloth to him, and he saw that he was not bereft of the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That cloth was an indication that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was aware of him, appreciated his devotional service because of social convention, and the highest standard that Lord Chaitanya had to keep as a jihaz, he wasn't going to meet with him right then and there, but he was showing his mercy upon him by delivering to Dino. And it is a fact that the Lord's devotees, the Lord's clothing, the Lord's bedding, the Lord's slippers, and everything required as ordinary accoutrements, ordinary so-called necessities of the Lord, are described as transformations of shesha, Incarnation of the Lord uh, coming from Sri Baladeya. Everything connected to the Lord is worshipful. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructs us that just as Krishna is worshipful, Krishna's place, Vrindavan, Krishna's devotee, Krishna's peacock, Krishna's gopis, Krishna's gopas, Krishna's trees, Krishna's roads, Krishna's Yamuna river, everything is worship. That we often hear devotees singing Jaya Jaya Vrindavasi Yata Jana, Jaya Jaya Vrindavana Jaya Vrindavana All glories to Vrindavan, all glories to the trees, all glories to the animals, all glories to the birds, all glories to the reptiles, all glories to the dirt, the dust of Vrindavan. Vrindavan itself is worshipful because everything connected with Krishna is also worshipful. So if a devotee has a staunch devotional attitude, these kinds of conclusions be awakened or revealed in their heart. 
coming back to the same verse which we've echoed throughout this whole series of uh, discussion. Yasha deve para de fear, yata deve tata, tushayite katitiata, prakasante mahapana. If one has unflinching faith in both the Lord and the spiritual master, which is to say the paraphernalia of the Lord, those who belong to the Lord and to whom the Lord belongs, then all the imports of Vedic knowledge are revealed. So following the footsteps of Maharaj Prakta Puruta, we also should learn to worship everything belonging to the Supreme Personality of God. This is called Tadina. And Lord Shiva himself was one of the 12 Mahajans. Sarvabhoma, Narada, Shambhu, Shayambhuva, Shayambhuva, Brahma, Narada, Sambhu, Komara, Kapila, Manu, Pralada, uh, Pralada, Janaka, Bhishma, Bali, Sukadeva, and Yamaraj. These are the 12 Mahajans. So no less than one of the 12 Mahajans, Lord Shiva himself, speaking confidentially to his wife Parvati, he says, greater than worship of Vishnu is worship of the Guru, the spiritual master. And, um, Aradharam, what is that verse? Aham bhakta param hir shrutanti vishadabhogarishan shadam. Krishna says, I am in the heart of my devotee, and my devotee is in my heart. I do not act independently. I only act according to the orders of my devotee. Yat sevana charana padma pavitaram sadyasya karamanam nashiya varaktam imam prakshada varti itaram vimanti. In the third canto of the Bhagavatam, the Lord makes an extraordinary statement. He says that uh, He says that I have become, by serving the lotus feet of my devotees, this is the all-auspicious Lord speaking, Krishna Surya Sama, this Lord is like the sun. He says, his opinion is, by say, serving at the lotus feet of my devotees, I have become endowed with such qualities that the goddess of fortune cannot leave my side even for a moment. Krishna is crediting whatever qualities he has, whatever attractivity he has, to the fact and he serves the lotus feet of his devotees and has by that service become blessed. Prahlad Mara says, the key to success in spiritual life is to bathe yourself in the dust from the lotus feet of devotees because they have received empowerment, they are Visionaries who see the Lord at every step. They have seen the truth. They have received the full blessings, the full shakti, the full power coming down in disciplic succession from their spiritual masters. And they promise, following the footsteps of Narada Muni, pure, enlightened representatives of the Lord, lovers of the Lord, promise that under their guidance, taking advantage of their mercy and their teachings, the droplets of nectar come from their mouth. And anybody who follows them, anybody who attaches them, will go back to home, back to God. And the test, in fact, of the potency of a devotee is how many others he can deliver back to home, back to God. And imagine when you were a kid and you were playing baseball, and there was one kid who was very talented, but he was mostly concerned about his own statistics. How many... Uh, grounders he fielded, how many fly balls he caught, how many RBI, RBIs he had, how many home runs he hit. He's mostly an individual player and he's looking to maybe get, you know, uh, hired by the minor leagues. He's hoping maybe to get a college scholarship. So he's always more concerned about his own statistics than he is about the team itself doing well. And then there's another kid who may not be as talented as that first kid, but he's more selfless. He doesn't care about his own statistics. He'll sacrifice himself. He'll bunt. Um, 
in order to get thrown out at first base, but if another runner can advance to third base. He'll stretch himself out to catch a fly ball uh, at risk of his own health and well-being. So at the end of the game, imagine the coach. To the talented boy who's self-absorbed, he says, good game, good game. But to the boy who may be less talented but is more team-minded, who sacrifices and who identifies with the well-being of the whole team, the coach says, good game, well played. So when you go back to the spiritual world, what do you want to hear from Krishna? You want to hear Krishna say, good game. I'm glad you came back. I missed you. Uh, or do you want to hear Krishna say, that's my boy. That's my girl. You ran your race. You captured the flag. And look at how many others, the crowd of souls that are returning back to Godhead because of you. Nobody is more dear. The Lord doesn't get as enthusiastic about any other category of devotees as he does about those who act as a touchstone. He tags their brains, the canvas, and travel here and there in order to give others the opportunity to go back to home, back to Godhead at the end of this current lifetime. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. What do you think, Rob? Expanding on our theme of yesterday. Don't go, don't go back to home. You can. You can go back to home alone, but. Krishna, um. Particularly enthusiastic about those who bring others back to the spiritual world. Yes, uh, yeah, I was actually reading um, both in Back to Godhead and in um, a Srimad Bhagavatam, the first canto, um, that it talks about, you know, everyone is dear to Krishna, but his pure devotees, the ones that, that strive to bring others and to spread his word and to bring others back to Godhead are even dearer to him. And the ones that, that have achieved the title of, of Prabhupada are the dearest to him and that's why they're they're worshiped just like he is because krishna sees them as his dearest devotees they are on the same level as him because they're doing his work to bring others back to godhead back to him which is what krishna wants and that's a good point Prabhupada is known mm -hmm. as Prabhupada. Prabhu means master and Prabhupada means feet so his very title conjures up the image of the Guru at whose feet are sitting a number of disciples. Anytime we hear these conversations in the Srimad Bhagavatam, there are always a lot, aside from the direct recipient, aside from the person who's asking the questions and getting the answers, there's always like more people in the area, aren't there? It's almost like that's the way it's supposed to be. That's the way these, the interviewer and the interview, it's almost the way that they wanted it to be. They arranged it. The conversation between Maharaj Krieg and Sukadeva was not at all a private conversation. <laughs> there, were, there, were, there was a whole huge assembly of sages. And then it disseminated. After Maharaj Krieg had left his body, then they went to all corners of the world, spread it. So that seems to be the preference of pure devotees. Let as many people eavesdrop as possible. That's why we have our Sunday feasts. And that's why we're on Zoom and Facebook. Uh, that's why devotees take every opportunity to get as wide of an exposure as possible. And hopefully, somehow, somewhere, somebody stumble upon some of this kata and it will make a huge difference in their lives. Rob himself came about one year ago. He came to the temple. What was your impression when you walked in the temple and they were having a Japathon? You were walked in the temple for the first time. Everybody was chanting Hare Krishna. What, do you remember what you thought at that time? Well, I had already been introduced to Bhakti through the wisdom of the sages. And I'd already been doing some chanting on my own and started reading the, the Bhagavad Gita. So I was familiar with what was going on, but I thought it was a pretty, pretty wonderful experience to be able to go to a place where there were so many people that were chanting. 
Um, and to do it at the temple was was a really special uh, experience for me. Um, so I was, I was excited. I was, and of course I felt very included because um, Unkar Prabhu was there and he he introduced me to the temple and and walked me around and and answered some of my questions and got me chanting and it was it was a great experience. Onkar is a wonderful talk about a touchdown while Onkar was here before he was recalled back to India. He he mentored so many people. He mentored so many people. Yeah. Speaking of Windhism and the sages, I heard, I forget who told me, they have sixty five hundred listeners. Is that right? Every day that between Facebook and YouTube and Zoom, there is and now also those who don't catch it live, catch it later, 6,500 people. Can you can you believe that? That's such an excellent exposure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can't, if you haven't, if you're not familiar with Wisdom of the Sages, we encourage you to uh, hook up to them. More than 600 episodes, 6,500 followers. There is some real, real mercy, some real kindness being uh, exhibited by devotees of the Lord. So thanks very much for Sue jumping in from Maine. Sue drives cars all over the country, gets paid for it. So every day she's in a different state, but she likes to drop in and connect with us. Brent is close at home. He's over in Springville. Natasha is from Provo, Hare Krishna. Christine, I think is from France. I don't know what time it is in France today. Bhai Bobby says, her picture is stuck while sound goes on well. I don't know. Let me know if your picture is stuck. I've got a high band internet connection here. It's from Comcast. It's supposed to do the job. But I guess as long as the sound is uninterrupted, it's probably okay. Minus a Ganga, thanks. You're joining live more often now. Maybe your schedule's changed. Sundari Priya is another one who's touched the hearts of so many people that come to the temple. And Sundari Priya extends herself and offers so many kindnesses to new people. Bhakti Gary, thank you very much, a consistent joinee. Jay has been very consistent of late. Jean, Jean is the most consistent. Thank you. Rakesh, thank you so much. Prabhuji. Uh, who else we got scrolling up here? Govinda Day, of course. Yep. Thank you very much. It's been Transcendental Tuesday. We'll finish up. Well, we'll never finish up this particular topic because the mercy of the spiritual master is unlimited and his influence extends far and wide. But um, we'll we'll spend one more day diving into this particular relishable topic of how. By implicit faith in the spiritual master and the Lord and the paraphernalia of the Lord, all the truths of the Vedas are revealed. Om Tat Sat. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram. Ram Ram, Hare Hare.